Lawrence Fox is a Nepo baby. He was born into a family of actors, playwrights and talent agents, and he would go on to star in shows such as Lewis, so an actor from an acting family. Um, He's also a right-wing populist speaking out against extreme political correctness and COVID vaccines, a funny combination which has emerged on the right. And he's also a questionable father. Take a look at this. I started to notice weird things happening with my kids. So the first one was my eldest son. A few years ago, I said, um, give me a kiss goodnight or hug goodnight, whatever. And he went, no, you need to ask my consent. And I was like, do I? And he said, yeah, at school they say you've got to ask consent. And I said, I'm your dad. And he said, yeah, but you still have to ask consent. And I went, okay, we're, we're going to have a little lesson on consent here. Consent is don't touch a stranger's private parts, right? That's consent. Don't touch, invade someone's space in that part. I'm your father. So anyway, I wrote to school and I said, what's going on here? Because he's obviously not understood consent. And they said, well, we don't really get to the sexual part of it until later. And I said, well, you can take it from me. I've just taught both of my children consent Mm. lesson one in about five minutes. And then I noticed that... um, you know, I start going, okay, well, where is this stuff coming from? So it comes out of relationship sex education classes and PSHE and stuff like that. So I, I got some lesson plans from another school and found out what was on it, which is privilege, skin colour privilege, gender ideology, um, diversity, equity and inclusion, all of the things that you just don't want kids being taught at a young age when they're confused as it is. And so I thought we got to change that. So we're going to do that as well. That's what we're, we're, which is our next sort of cultural project, which is going to be called bad education. We just like to put bad in front of everything. <laughs> that was a very bad definition of consent. The idea that consent is don't touch a stranger's private parts. You know, consent only involves strangers. You don't need consent if you're someone's father. You don't need consent if you know the person. Now, obviously, obviously, most abuse, most sexual exploitation comes from people who know the person. Right. So it's incredibly important that when children are taught about consent, it includes people they know. The idea I don't need consent because I'm your father is incredibly, incredibly dangerous. Right. Now, Aaron, I mean, I, Lawrence Fox obviously felt comfortable saying that publicly. To me, that's a massive red flag. I kind of disagree, Michael. Oh, interesting. Go on. I think clearly around adults in your life, clearly, I think it's a very healthy thing to say, look, if you're going to come close to me, you need to have consent. But I think there is something instinctively strange about a teacher telling a child the parameters of their personal relationships with their children. You know, a child, for instance, might want connection. They might seek connection with their parents. They might want comforting in a personal moment. And they may think, actually, this isn't normal. I have to ask my parents' consent. Maybe my parents aren't comfortable with it. I think it's kind of, I think it's a bit weird, f- frankly. I mean, I'm, maybe I want to get cancelled for that. I don't think I will. <laughs> I, I, I think that the whole idea that, I think what he's saying is completely wrong, by the way. And this is part of a sort of wider, a wider tactic within the culture war. There was a piece recently by Eric Kaufman in The, um, in the Telegraph, um, and it was built upon a, a, a policy exchange report he did. And the piece in The Telegraph said, school indoctrination is turning... British youth woke and Tories remain silent. Uh, And that was based upon the uh, report he wrote for Policy Exchange, The Political Culture of Young Britain. Now, what was really, really interesting about that, Michael, was that he asked a bunch of people who were 18, 19 about their relationship to certain woke ideas. And they were more likely to have heard about these woke ideas from their parents before they heard about them from school which he conveniently doesn't mention in the Telegraph piece. So this idea of, for instance, uh, white privilege, white supremacy, uh, all these ideas that the likes of uh, Lawrence Fox and his uh, comrades rail against, actually children were more likely to get these ideas from their parents than from school. So I would push back actually against some of the core claims he's making. Children aren't you know, receiving indoctrination and, and you know, uh, via schooling at the cost of their parents, actually many of the quote-unquote woke ideas that Lawrence Fox finds rather unsavory are being taught to children by their parents. Because of course many parents now, like Lawrence Fox, are in their early 40s, late 30s. They have quite different social attitudes on things like LGBT rights, race, than they did to their own parents. So I, I would push back actually against that, Michael. And I think us even reproducing the idea that schools are telling children what to think and feel 
and they're using that against their own parents. I think that's part of a moral scare, which isn't actually accurate, isn't happening. Uh, no, I'm going to completely disagree with you. I mean, obviously, I don't know what was said in that class, right? But I actually, and, and one of the reasons I put this in wasn't just to sort of have a go at Lawrence Fox, because I think this is actually a positive story. And I mean, the reason I say this, I've been hanging around with my my niece. My sister's got a sort of three-year-old niece who's sort of speaking and very social. And I kind of really notice how she is, this three-year-old, very, very aware of boundaries and sort of like, I don't want to do this. I do want to do that. And you know, that might sound precocious to sort of like a, a very traditional parent. But I actually think it's really, really great, right? I, I think that kids these days do have more of a sense of, of 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 the fact that they can police their own boundaries in a way that maybe people didn't in the past. And I think for most people, this doesn't matter. Like, it, uh, you know, it, for most people, it doesn't really matter if your parent says, oh, go on, give me a kiss. Or if your parent says, can I give you a kiss? Right. It's, it's just a, it's just a different difference of language. For most people, it doesn't matter. But child abuse does exist. Right. And if we can change norms whereby it is normal to ask for consent. And it doesn't have to be, you know, can I have your written consent so I can hug you, child? It's it, it's just changing our language, say, oh, go and give me a kiss, to saying, can you give me a kiss? And I think the fact that kids are being taught now that they have a right to say no, that consent is important, I think that probably will have the effect that in those minority of cases where child abuse is going on, sexual exploitation is going on, then children are less confused and they have more that they feel more empowered to say that I didn't consent to that, you know, tell their teacher or whatever. So I disagree with you. I think that this is actually quite an important lesson, which is being taught to kids from their teachers. I'm going to come back to this, Michael. Look, I think, I think you're buying into a moral scare where literally what you're saying is that all, all parents are potential, are potential sexual predators and that schools are now protecting children from the potential sexual deviancy of their parents. I, I, I think that's quite a, I think that's quite a dangerous place to be. Um, and of course, it's and what you're saying is, I, I agree with you, Michael. And it can just mean a slight shift in our culture from like, oh, give us a kiss to, can I give you a kiss? I agree with you entirely, Michael. But I think you're buying into a moral scare, which suits uh, Lawrence Fox, which no, is that, to say I, that actually because I, I, I don't, I don't think this is a problem. I don't think most children are having that conversation with their parents. I think he's a bit doolally. I think he's probably exaggerating something. Which, hey, look, maybe this didn't even happen, Michael. And I think well, it, it might suits be. The, it him. might be the case that he's 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 very. You know, I, I do not want to, sp I, don't, I know nothing about how he is with his children. I'm clearly not calling him a child abuser for a start. But <laughs> it, it might be the case that one of the reasons this conversation got a little bit awkward is because maybe he is a bit too forthcoming and the kid wanted a bit more space, right? It, it, that's very plausible. And I think if the kid wanted a bit more space for them to have a language to express that isn't, isn't a bad thing. And I is do think new? hanging out... Is that, is that new? Look, I remember my, my mum or my uncles, aunties, my dad trying to give me a kiss or a cuddle when I was a kid and me saying, get off, that's what kids do. Is that new? Again, like, I think we're buying into a frame. This is new, culture war, teachers. Is that new? I suppose, what, so, what, so, so why I sort of introduced my anecdote, and I mean, I don't hang out with that, you know, this, this is a very small data pool I'm sort of pulling from here, drawing from here. But when I think about my niece, I do think she, she talks about these things in a different way to which I was used to. And I think at first it can be a bit like, oh. You know, that's, a, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't, no, I don't want to hang out here. It's like, oh, you can feel a little bit offended. But then you realize, actually, this is really cool. It's really good that like kids feel empowered to sort of set those boundaries. And you just need to change your language. So I, I, I think it's a healthy change. And I do think there has been a change. And I don't, I don't think it's that kids are, you know, writing huge essays on consent and saying, oh, you've used your parental privilege against me, blah, blah, blah. It's not that kids have become woke. It's just that I do think that sort of probably... <laughs> Because there is an understanding that sexual exploitation did go unnoticed too often in the past, that you have had development within sort of child protection services, education, training, sort of pedagogy, where there has been a, a sort of consciousness that actually probably we do need to teach kids more about this kind of stuff so that those exceptional circumstances where you have a, a family member who is sexually abusive, so there is a language to resist that. Hold on. Let's say, let's say there's a child, a small, powerless child who's six or seven years old, and then there's a family member, and this happens very frequently, as you've said, well, not very frequently, it, it is a mass social phenomenon. Do you think if the child explicitly doesn't consent to something, that would stop a potential sexual abuser? Of course it wouldn't. This isn't about, and again, I don't work in child protection, but from my understanding and sort of my interpretation of this, is it's not about if a child tells their uncle, I don't want to do this, the uncle won't do it. It's about making a child feel empowered and comfortable to tell someone else, right? To tell their teacher or to tell another family member to say, this thing mm. happened and I didn't consent. Because I think, again, I'm not an expert on this, but my impression is that one of the reasons child abuse is able to continue is because 
the adult, the, the, the powerful person in the situation, really tries to blur the boundaries of consent to sort of say your consent doesn't matter or you have implicitly consented to this, et cetera, et cetera. You, could, you know, there, there are sort of mechanisms of manipulation that the powerful person, the older person in that situation can deploy. And I do think that giving children a language to resist that, not necessarily in, with the person in that room, but to tell someone about it, I think is probably a healthy thing. Okay, let's say it's their grandmother. Their grandmother kisses the child and the child says later, oh, mummy, daddy, I didn't consent to that. I think that's quite sad, personally. I don't, I, I don't I think, think that's... that's well, I don't, think it's a big, I don't think it's a big problem, actually. I think then you can just say, oh, next time, say, can I give you a kiss? I think it's fine. I know I don't think it's a big problem either. I think, I think this is being turned into a moral scare by people like, um, by people like um, Lawrence Fox, and, and we're eating it up. Quickly, just on that report I, rem I, I, I mentioned earlier, um, the data from that report said that 11% of children encountered these quote-unquote woke ideas in, in classrooms the first time, 11%. 50% found them on social media for the first time. So this idea that schools are these madrasses to, to you know, teach these radical ideas to, to children is simply untrue. Most of it's coming from social media. And as I said earlier, more or less the same as with schools is coming from their own parents. So I, I do think this is part of a moral scale which bears no relationship to reality. A young child is more likely to learn about express consent from social media than from schools. I think it's a framing that suits the far right to discredit really important institutions, which we all need, uh, which is, you know, is, is, is primary and secondary education. I think you're blurring two things. I think the sort of like a, your sort of like kids telling their parents they've got white privilege or whatever. I can see why that would, you know, I think that's not happening and that's a moral scare story. I think kids being taught about consent, that is happening. And that's a good thing. Mm -hmm.